Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to talk and clearly hear from your angels. Now, I had no intention of making this video today. In fact, I'm actually on vacation. I'm hanging out with my mom and my family and just kind of disconnecting from the outside world as much as possible. But as you guys know, I don't neglect my spiritual practice. In fact, I almost heighten it during these vacation times. While I was in my meditation just this morning, that I was in my meditation speaking and communicating with my angels and I was clearly guided to come and to share how you guys can also communicate and speak with your angels. Then I look down at my shirt and it has angels on it. Now you guys are probably like, wait, Jess, if you are wearing that shirt, then you know that you own that shirt. Where's the coincidence in that? Where's the synchronicity in that? Well, the day before, I decided to go to the mall just to blow some time and just to hang out and see what's going on. And I bought two things. So when I brought it to the register to pay to check out, the guy's like, you can get one free thing. You can pick it from that box. So I was like, all right, cool. So I put my hand in the box, I pull it out, and it's an angel shirt. And I'm like, oh my God, that is so cute. Let me show you what this shirt looks like. So we have all these different angels on there with all these different virtues. We have guardian, this says patience, this says strength, love luck and kindness now i had totally forgotten that i even went shopping and then i picked this shirt up and then i just threw it on today without washing it which is really gross but i picked this shirt up and i put it on today and as i'm sitting in my meditation i felt the message of teach them just how to communicate with us teach them how to talk to us teach them how to hear us they need to know and i was like whoa okay and then after my meditation was done after the messages were received i looked down and i was wearing my angel shirt so I don't know, you tell me. So there are many ways that you can choose to communicate with your angels, the most obvious being prayer. But one of my favorite ways is through meditation. Basically what you wanna do is take some time out of your day. For me, I start with 22 minutes in the morning and I ground myself and I center myself by focusing on my breathing, by focusing on my breath. I clear and cancel out any thoughts, any worries. This is one of the reasons why I love meditating and starting my day off in the morning going directly into meditation because I'm not thinking about all of the events of the day that have already happened because the day is only just beginning. And usually because my brain is just waking up and just getting started, it tends to be a little bit more sluggish. It tends to be a little bit more tired. I'm not a morning person, so I use that for my benefit. Because my brain is a little bit more sluggish, it's not actively thinking all these extra thoughts and it tends to be more open to receiving messages and to taking its time getting started. But I don't limit myself just to a morning meditation. That's just my routine, my ritual every morning as I started off with 22 minutes of meditation and prayer before I get my day started. And as my day unfolds, there are many moments where I use prayer to communicate with my angels and to communicate with my guides. So you can choose what time works best for you, if it's in the morning, if it's during lunchtime, if it's at night, or if it's multiple times a day. And I also wanna say that this method of using meditation to really deeply connect and commune with your angels is only one way of a bunch of different ways to communicate. But this is the one that I feel called the most to share with you guys today. So basically what I do is I ground myself, I center myself. Sometimes I do this actually in my bed, but I understand that for many of you guys, staying in your bed is going to just invite you to go back to sleep. If that's the case, find a sacred space or a quiet space where you won't be disturbed, where you can focus on your breath and you can focus on opening the door for you to have a conversation back and forth with your angels and your guides. Another spot that I love outside of my bed that I use to meditate is my sacred space. And usually that's somewhere outside. I love sitting in the grass. I love feeling the sunshine on my face. I love being by the ocean. I love being by a river. Or even taking a walk can be meditative. It's up to you to kind of feel out what works best for you and what doesn't work best for you. If you find that you keep getting interrupted by external things, then that is probably not the right space. Find something else that works for you and do your best with this. For those of you guys that are total beginners to meditating, Realize that meditating and this opening yourself up to speaking to spirit or speaking to angels, it can take some practice. I think that the best thing to do is to stay patient and to just stay committed to it, especially if this is something that you truly, truly want for yourself. And I can promise you that just like with anything, it gets better over time. Again, you just have to be really committed to it. So anyways, so you're back in your meditative state. Your mind is for the most part pretty clear. And the next thing you wanna do is you wanna open off with a prayer. Now this prayer can be anything, but what I do wanna say is that I want it to be very heartfelt. This is that moment where I am actively inviting my angels to 
step into my life and to be present. And I, I'm inviting them in, I'm calling them in. I ask them to join me in that moment. I ask for them to communicate with me clearly. I ask them to send me signs and signals that they're with me in that moment so that I can feel the confirmation that they are actually there. Those are some things that I feel like people forget to ask for but it really does help to support that moment, your connection with your angels, because you can actually feel their presence and it's so encouraging. One other thing that I wanna say is that your angels, or angels in general, they are going to respond to what it is that you're putting out there and whatever it is that you're asking of them. And I feel like because they're from the spiritual realms that if we don't invite them in in a specific way or in a way that feels comfortable to us, there's a healthy space of distance and boundaries just for the simple sake of protecting us and making sure that they are not going to freak us out so it's really up to you to communicate and to put it out there as far as how you are going to feel most comfortable and what it is that you're open to receiving from them so if you don't want to be touched by your angels if you don't feel their presence their physical presence then those are things that you can say and those are things that you don't have to call in however if you're like me I genuinely like to feel the presence of God and to feel the presence of my angels with me I don't even have to ask them now they just I just know that when they show up it feels like spider webs on my nose it feels like there's you know little ants or spiders moving through my scalp or maybe I feel an overwhelming presence of unconditional love or warmth or whatever it is it can really vary depending on the angel and depending on what's going on in my life at that time so you're starting off with prayer and then you really want to bless that space now this can be a little controversial because some people feel like blessing the space first and foremost but for me personally I feel like in that prayer when I'm praying and when I'm calling the angels and my guides in, that's my moment to kind of bless the space. But to each their own, just kind of follow your vibes with that. Some people really like to sage and cleanse the space beforehand or using Palo Santo or crystals. For me personally, because it's so early in the morning, and because my space has already been blessed because that's just how I roll, I don't make my routine any more elaborate than it already is. I, I like to keep my life and my practice and my rituals as simple as possible. And I have always found that the simple it is, the more effective it is. And also, the more simple it is, the more likely I am to continue it because it's not this elaborate display of things that it is that I need to do before I can communicate with my angel. But of course, I do have more elaborate rituals that I will do, but just not when it comes to communicating with my angels in this moment. So the next thing you want to do is you want to tell them, listen, I am ready to talk. I want to communicate. I want to hear from you. And you can say it just like that. There's no need to, you know, paint this vocabulary that you don't normally speak with. Really communicate and talk from your heart. Speak from your heart. Talk as if you would with a friend or a family or you and I just sitting here having coffee and talking about how we communicate with our angels. So after you put out that prayer, inviting them in, you want to make a note of what it is that you're feeling, what it is that you're thinking, what it is that you're sensing. When you are sensing and when you are feeling certain things, you don't want to stop that moment. You just allow it to unfold. You don't want to rush and be like, okay, what does this mean? Especially if you start getting signs and signals or images within your third eye, just make a mental note of it. If you forget it, then you forget it. The point of this process is to communicate with your angels and to open the door for them to communicate with you more often. So if that's the case, there's gonna be many times where you're gonna receive different signs and signals from them and different messages from them. But what I don't want you to do is to break the lines of, a commu of communication that you just opened up. So just stay open and don't force it, don't fight it, don't try to over-understand. Lower your expectation when it comes to what it is that you're going to receive and what it is that, whatever it is that you receive, what it's going to feel like. I just want you to be in a space where you're observing, where you're listening, and you're communicating. So after you put the prayer out, you've invited them in, you're making a note of what it is that you're feeling, ask them specifically for what it is that you truly want for yourself. For some of you guys, you want guidance into you know where you're going in your life and the things that you need to see, the things that you need to hear. Others, you may ask for healing. Others, you may ask for blessings over yourself, for your family, over your job, or whatever. You can ask for ideas, you can ask for love, you can ask for a joke. I mean the sky's the limit. You can ask them for their names so that you can call on them easier the next time. You can ask for signs to make it clearly known like okay how do I know that it's you? How do I, what's the best way that I can communicate with you over time more consistently? Anything that it is that you want. And as I'm saying this I'm hearing a of ringing in my ear which I forgot to mention is another way that my my angels will communicate with me I'll start hearing a ringing in my my right ear and I don't hear this or feel this or experience this in my waking life outside of when I'm trying to communicate with them as soon as I hear that I'm like okay what's up I'm listening one question I get a lot is just what is the difference between me and my imagination 
and me and hearing from my angels and guides. Now, the best way for me to answer that is by saying very lightly is that over time, you will distinguish, you will learn to distinguish the difference between what your imagination looks and feels and sounds like and then what your angels and your guides look and feel and sound like. To take the pressure off of you guys right now, I will say that imagination is not necessarily a good or a bad thing. I think that in our society, we look at our imagination as, okay, this isn't real. But the reality is, is that sometimes it's the imagination that leads you into the world of the unknown because it shows how open your brain is and how open your mind is to things that are not logically seen right now but over time you will begin to see it because you're open to it and you'll start to see you'll start to see it all the time i also want to make a note that it was even god the creator that used his or her imagination in order to create this entire world either way it's this ability to think outside of your current limitations which opens the door the portal to something bigger and better and that is ultimately what it is that you're doing so that being said i really want to invite you to not you know, diminish the power of even an imaginative mind because sometimes your angels will actually use your imagination to paint an idea for you or to paint a song or to paint a creative way of you expressing yourself because that's how they're trying to communicate with you. That's trying. That's how they're trying to heal you. Now, for those of you guys who are like, Jess, I don't feel anything. Listen, there are moments where you will feel nothing. There will be moments where you will feel everything it doesn't take away from the power and the sacredness and the how special and important your your moments within that meditation with your angels it doesn't take away from the magic of that another question i get is well how long should i sit communicating with them i mean that's totally up to you i will not take any less than 22 minutes in the morning but throughout the day it could just be a really quick like help which is like half of a second of a message or it could be a long elaborate I need to get this off my heart I need to communicate with you guys I need to talk to you about this I need to ask for your help with this and I will do that through prayer and that could be done anywhere but it's totally up to you one thing I will say is that there is I feel there is such a thing as too much time with your angels if that makes any sense it's totally controversial but I feel like in today's world there's this focus on communicating with our angels and our spirit guides so it's like we're constantly seeking them out and we're constantly trying to spend time with them for some people and I feel like it's really important to remember that you are a human being first you didn't come into this world as a just a spiritual being so you have to go out and you have to live your life to the fullest in the way that resonates and makes sense to you and feels good to you don't spend so much time consumed with trying to find your angels and try to look for signs to the point where you are diminishing your experience here on earth because you are a human being like yes you're a spiritual being but you're a human being and if you sat down with god and if you sat down with your angels they would tell you like look live your life we are the spiritual beings we're the angelic beings who are going to help you to live your life to the fullest use us and communicate with us to help you to do that all right you guys so i hope that that makes sense let me know if you guys have any questions Questions when it comes to anything that I've said within this video I'm really interested in hearing about moments that you've had with your angels maybe you weren't meditating maybe you weren't praying and they showed up for you in some miraculous way kind of like how Archangel Michael or Archangel Gabriel has shown up for me within my life which is a topic for a total another video that's like a story time what signs and feelings do you receive from your angels a lot of you guys will see feathers throughout the day some of you guys will feel things like for me it's like my nose starts tickling so bad it's like just so distracting so I'll just wipe my nose you guys see that a lot when I'm sharing my intuitive messages with you guys here on my YouTube channel and other times it feels like there's little spiders all on my scalp so I'm really interested in hearing how it shows up for you I want to invite you to go ahead and subscribe because I feel like it's good it's good for me it's good for a channel it's good for a tribe it's good for our community it's good for you because there's plenty more videos where this came from and I'll see you on my next one bye